So today with my mixing, I'm really going to focus in on the lips. Uh, I haven't done any drawing of that yet, so I'm going to draw directly onto the uh, canvas today because we haven't really had a chance to talk about lips much. So I'll talk a little bit about how I lay down um, my drawing first and then I'll, I'll get right into mixing the colors. Uh, so sometimes I will start with a brush depending on how refined of a drawing I'm doing. If I want something really refined I'll usually start with a pencil. Um, or I'll do it separately and transfer it to the canvas as we've been doing in the portrait class, but for a quick little study like this, I can just go in directly with my brush. So I'm going to pick um, raw umber as the color. A little paint on it. Okay, so a little bit of raw umber. I just thin that out. I'm using my uh, mixture of 50% linseed oil to 50% solvent um, and when I'm thinking about the, the mouth um, I try to look for anywhere where I can find a curved line so there's not a whole heck of a lot of curve here but there is a slight arc from corner to corner um, so I'm just going to kind of mark where I would put my corners and then just sort of throw a general line in Okay, so something like that. And then I'm going to start looking at more of the irregularities of that line. So that's really just my center line that I'm thinking about right now. Um, now looking at some of the forms of the lips. Um, you know, with the upper lip, I, a lot of times I can break this up into three distinct forms. So right in the middle, there's a part that kind of bulges out. like that, almost creating a heart shape. It creates this little dip right here on the top of the lips. And then you have these sort of, almost like, I think of these kind of like pillows, like squishy pillows you have on the sides here. Okay, that taper in as they move into the corners. And then looking at the lower lip, again, I have some of those round form. So there's a lot of ovals, tapering oval shapes, um, but that's your basic construction. It's a very simple way to kind of lay out the structure of the lips. All right, so I'm going to start in with the color um, and <clears throat> I'm going to look at um, I'll start with the lips and then I'll kind of work my way around the lips into some of the flesh, flesh tones. But if I'm just starting with the lips, uh, I'm going to be using mostly my reds and I may use a little bit of yellow here and there to change the hue. Um, I'm going to start with my cad red, which is one of my highest chroma colors. And I'm going to probably end up toning this down a lot but let's just start with that and see what we can do. Okay, so very strong, very pure red. So right away I can see that's going to be way too red. Um, you know, I definitely want to cool it down. There's some coolness, especially in that upper lip. So uh, I'm going to pull a little bit of my cobalt violet into this mixture. Probably a lot more. It's Cobalt violet. I can also do a little bit of the um, rose matter, but for now I'm just going to stick with the cobalt violet. Okay. So now there's slight differences in color between the upper lip and the lower lip. So I kind of want to think about which one I'm going to start with. I think I'll start with the upper lip. And, you know, right now that's going to be. Um, Color is getting closer, but it's too dark of a value, so I'm going to lighten that by adding a tiny bit of Naples yellow light. So that seems like that might be pretty close. Um, and that's, again, my general color. I'm not looking at all the little variations within that. I just want to throw something down 
and then I can start working on the, the differences in the lights and the shadows. The other thing that's really interesting about lips is the texture. Um, you, can, you can really do a lot with the texture depending on how much detail you want to add. Um, and also the fact that lips are moist, so you get these really nice highlights that um, can make the painting very interesting. Uh, so for right now, let's just see color-wise what we're working with here. Uh, not too far off. Um, okay, so now for the lower lip, same thing. I'm just going to kind of look at my color mixtures, and I can probably use <clears throat> the same paints, just with different, um, different variations. Okay, so that's my CAD red medium. Um, and then a little bit of my Naples yellow light really hot red, too hot. Um, so now I kind of go through the same process. I'm going to cool it down, looking at my hue. Is it warm? Is it cool? How can I adjust that? And then also the value. Well, probably something like that. So I'm really not that much different from the top lip, just a little bit warmer. At least for now, you know, as I say all the time, think general to specific. Um, like this color is going to probably be close to what's happening here. And then I can just add lights over that if I want to, or I can just wipe out sections um, to make the adjustment. So I think that's, that's good for a start. Um, you know, one of the most important things is that at least I can get in the value right. I think that's always something to look for in the early stages. Like if your values are off, it makes it harder to adjust your colors. The color is much easier to adjust as long as you have the right value. Uh, so I think my value is pretty good. If anything, it's just a little too yellow in the hue. Um, but that's, you know, I could always add more white or you know, maybe a little bit more pink up here and start manipulating that. Remember, this is just a base layer. So that's the other thing to, to remember is that oils is a process. So you can always cover the paint up. You do it in layers. There's usually an awkward stage in the painting process. Um, this would be that stage. So the next layer is where all the magic really happens. Uh, now, one thing I also really am conscious of when I'm painting lips, I had said you have sort of the roundness, everything is round. And even thinking about the plane, like this plane sort of angles out, and then when you come into the upper lip, that plane angles back in. So if you're looking at it from the profile, you have, you have something like this. An outward plane and then a plane that comes down and there's actually some curve to that so when we're looking at the the values and the colors it's very subtle but if I look closely at, at her lip I see it gets a little bit darker before I get to that center line so this is not a solid value all the way through there's actually a slight transition Then I get to the darkest part of that line. Um, you see it really on the light side quite a bit. So I want to pay attention to that, and that will give a little bit more form to the lips just doing that alone. And come back and just kind of add more of that darkness and I'm kind of pulling that darkness into the lip a little bit so I'm making a slight adjustment on the shape um, and also the edge I want that edge to be a little bit softer I 
And I'm just sort of looking at the pattern of these creases, you know, so as I kind of look, this will actually help to accentuate the form too. As I look at each one of these ridges, when I come to this side, they're kind of moving in towards the center at a diagonal this way. When I come into the center, they're more straight up and down. And then when I come over to this side, they're moving diagonal that way. All that information is going to help to make it look round as you move from side to side. I'm looking very carefully now. This is kind of one of those things that I do normally towards the end. I would do this normally in the second layer where I start adding those, those details, but this, this is what's going to make it look more natural. Uh, just these subtle imperfections. And when I'm, when I'm doing something like this, I'm really thinking about varying the, the strokes in many different ways. So the direction of the strokes, the color, the value, the, the thickness, the, the hardness or the softness of the edges. All that information is really going to help with um, making it look organic, but also accentuating the form. It kind of always goes back to the form. I want, I want to see the roundness from top to bottom and also from side to side. on there and the highlights can be very opaque like that's one place where I'll, you know once I put it on I probably won't blend it too too much uh, because even when you're looking at paintings in museums and you a lot of times you look closely you notice the highlights are very very thick the light in the museum will actually catch it better if it's if it's a little bit thicker and it will actually look even brighter um, so when I talk about opaque lights and transparent shadows um, you know I'm really thinking of that in a very physical way and it's, it's almost more sculptural then too mm -hmm. so you think of the lights as being the areas that are going to stand out physically um, and this is going to also make the lips look more moist. So you could wait until the painting was dry to do all this if you really wanted to, because um, you know one of the problems I'm having is it's picking up some of the paint. So um, you know sometimes it's just better to do that in a second layer. But another option is maybe just wipe out a little bit. stronger. So if you were doing a plain air painting and you wanted to put in some highlights, just scrape off the paint and then you can add them back in. And these are the little details that I love. I could go spend all day just <laughs> painting highlights on lips. Uh, <laughs> but it gives it that, that nice moist kind of look. And you can see how I'm doing. I'm just varying my strokes. Um, you kind of automatically get variations in values because sometimes it'll pick up more paint, other times it won't. Um, so that part I don't have to worry about as much. I just try to put the paint down a little bit heavier where I want the highlights to be brighter and a little bit um, thinner where I want them to be more dull. 